Thanks so much, Kim. Uh, it's really moving to hear that you like the poem and the words that you did, uh, and that you've got it so completely. It means a lot to me. It's lovely to be back here uh, reading for poets and players. Um, I'll start then with the poem that Kim gave second prize to. It's an after poem, so I wrote it very much in response uh, to a poem, a wonderful poem by Nick Laird called The Given. And if it's not a poem or a poet that you know, uh, go away and have a look at that poem and that poet after this reading. The Smuggler. She knew she needed to start off small, so took the spoons. What a boon. Easy silver necks from their rosy velvet trays into her tinkling sleeves. He only picked at his guitar with filthy nails, inhaled another toke of weed. Next, she stuck out lamps and lampshades, ceiling roses, bulbs. She stashed them quietly in her boot. What a hoot. He simply frowned, put on his head torch, Watched five episodes of Top Gear, sucked the six pack down. Last week, she slid the curtains from their poles, how droll, then slid the windows from their sockets, bubble wrapped the glass, and hid their views inside her pockets. He shrugged, pulled on a jumper, filled his bomb with grass. Today's his birthday, and she's carried off the roof. The rafters, chimney pot, so on. This time he's shouting at the wind, fists raised to the stars. It's nothing new, this, the fists, the shouting, the shouting, fists. She's taken it for years. Tonight, she's packed up firelight, shadows, warmth, and headed south. Of all the things she ever took, it was her mother's advice that got her out. Shall we reach home soon? Oh, him? Look, he's still there, crouched on all fours, howling at the moon. Her, but found it hard to pin down when it had begun. 
Was it when he said a new hat looks like an animal crawled onto your head and died there? Or when he made her say hot water bottle over and over, calling her accent adorable? How the other toys at the tea party had laughed. Teddy said none of the other bears was good enough for Delia. Not the best version of her. The version only he could help her work towards. Paddington liked to spliff. Pooh was pretentious. Rupert was holding her back. And Lickitude made her laugh too much and act like a crazy person. Order was important to Teddy. When he woke her at 1am, growling for picnic food right there, right then, Delia thought that something was maybe not okay. He made a list of silly words that she used. Serviette and settee, toilet and cheers. When she began to avoid bedtimes, got puffy drinking late into the night, Teddy said, there's more of you to love. He didn't do snuggles anymore. One time, he rocked up on a girl's night out with the ragdolls, saying her lateness home shows you don't respect the value of other people's time. It wasn't all bad. Teddy taught her the difference between it's and it's, less and fewer, no and yes. He was good at rules. And there was much that Delia still needed to learn. So those are the bad guy poems. <laughs> Things will start to look up, I promise you. I've chosen this next poem because it was another one that Kim actually chose um, for second place in, in, a, in a competition in the last year for the York Prize. And it's kind of an antidote, hopefully, <laughs> to what's just gone before. Wonder Woman questions her status as a 70s symbol of female empowerment. All my villains like to tie me up. They lick their lips and salivate. My body a shining slice of cherry cheesecake. My breasts twin spaniels off the leash. The bouncy castles of my thighs. Despite my strength and speed and near invulnerability to pain, there's nothing new. The unpaid labour, crazy hours, saving the world from boys will be boys, one sneaks back at a time. They dress me up as July the 4th, spanked hot pants, red heeled boots, my cape, parody of stars and stripes. This bustier, please, eagle wings unfurl feathers like fingers grappling each scarlet silken boob. Spider-Man and Superman getting mega bucks for half the degradation I endure. No room to smile for them, no imperatives for warmth, no spinning themselves on a tanning bed could back me on a spike. I was given my script from birth, rehearsed for the role from It's a Girl. Trained to preach our need for female solidarity while whirling my tips around like mushroom volivons on a tray. Fuck that. I want to take up room. I want to spread my legs on the subway, hurl my voice, to scowl whenever the hell I please. It comes to this. I want to meet the eye of any man and feel no fear. Get me scotch on the rocks, my coffee hot. Get me the biggest slice of key lime goddamn pie you've got. Go apprehend your creeps. I want my sweet red skinned and a big white bed that's empty. Safe for me. And finally, um, just before I read my last poem, I want to say a huge thank you to poets and players. Uh, to everybody that's part of that organisation, to you guys as audience, and again, hugely to Kim Moore for choosing this poem. Can't wait to hear Isabel read in just a moment. Um, this one is uh, for Ollie. I'll get choked up. So. This one's for Ollie. Honey, you know, Scuzzle. 
You teach me the name of each bone, my love, and I test on my tongue every word, my love. A red shank now boomerangs in towards shore where her water feet cry and be heard, my love. At Mull Head's rocky ledge, dark cormorants stand and survey the white skin churn to curd, my love. A gallant beak pierces the linen of mist, pulling fast an invisible cord, my love. When a sea fret blows in from the coast, then exhales once again you're beside me, unblurred, my love. A crow in a hood flaps its course into school around the cliffs of dearness, undeterred, my love. These kitty wakes glide, they trace wings with their wings and your voice to the air that they've stirred. Thank you. 